The following program is brought to you by the Worldwide Exemplification of Freemasonry and made possible by the research behind the building series of Uncommon Catechism for Uncommon Masonic Education, Volumes 1 through 4. The views expressed in this presentation are that of the author and do not represent any specific Grand Lodge. Freemason education provides light that supports Freemasonry, as in, the organizations of builders. Masonic education provides light that builds builders, as in, the builders that make up those organizations. Masons should know the difference and act accordingly. Good day, my brothers and friends. I'm Brother John S. Nagy and I'm responsible for the presentation that you're about to experience. I'm a North American Freemason who practices Freemasonry within the jurisdiction of the state of Florida in the southeastern United States. I have received the first three degrees, earned my white lambskin apron, am a perpetual member of Tampa Bay Lodge number 252, and a lifetime member of the Florida Lodge of Research number 999. I provide music to my two lodges as their lodge musician and provide occasional Masonic education pieces as time permits. I'm a published Masonic author, having written and published six books, four that overtly address Masonic education and two that covertly address Masonic education. I've co-authored a seventh Masonic book, published numerous Masonic educational articles that have appeared in Further Light magazine, Lodge Room International magazine, the Working Tools magazine, and on my Masonic blog, Building Builders. In my professional life, I'm a retired electronics engineer. I've been a business coach for over 22 years and currently run a corporation that provides business coaching services and technical support. In between coaching and writing, I also mediate small claims cases part-time at the local courthouse and help train other mediators as well. The Masonic paradigm I share with you today is drastically different from that which many Freemasons are familiar. To maximize the return on your investment in viewing this presentation, please pause it from time to time and take a moment to perpend what you're hearing, taking notes on any thoughts that you may have and how you might want to apply them at some future time. Today I share with you some insights that can assist you in your Masonic and life endeavors. These insights are provided to you in the guise of a topic that hopefully serves as a sufficient vehicle for conveying and receiving this information. The topic is called Building Builders, and I present it to you from a coach's perspective. I believe this perspective is relevant as there are many of you that either coach and mentor others along their path using a coaching approach and therefore should be an informed provider, or who are the recipients of coaching and mentoring efforts and should therefore be informed consumers. The work of Freemasons is not easy, especially if they have limited guidance. What most coaches focus upon at the Blue Lodge level is preparing the candidate for the next level. What this means for most jurisdictions using American Right is having the candidate work on proficiencies. Typical proficiencies may include repeating back the obligations. Some jurisdictions include in this effort something called catechism. For those of you not familiar with catechism, it is a series of inquiries and responses exchanged between the catechist and the catechumen. In the case of Freemason training, this would be between the coach and the candidate, respectively. Most catechisms include a detailed description of what occurred during the degree in question, who is involved, the degree obligation, some of the working tools that were used, and an overview of why specific things were included. The candidate is expected to provide specific worded responses to all inquiries put forth by the coach that, upon sufficient completion, entitles the candidate to be voted upon by the present lodge members for progression to the next degree or honored with a white lambskin apron. What I've just covered are the usual requirements to progress through the first three degrees of Freemasonry. To progress in Masonry, though, requires a completely different set of actions. 
Masonic progression is comprised of three distinct stages. They are preparing to learn, learning how to learn, learning and teaching. As you might have guessed, these correlate directly to the first, second, and third degree ritual and can be found contained within the preserved code of each. I'll share more about this code in a moment. First, I'll share how this code was discovered. To get a firm grasp on what takes place when coaches help build builders, and not just membership in the Fraternity of Freemasons, I'll share an example with you. This example reflects one of the paradigms that shifted for me and that helped me to better understand what is required to build builders. It has to do with a Mason's ability to see beyond things that might mislead others. The example that I offer has to do with the letter G, found in the center of the overlapping square and compasses. There has been much speculation on the letter G. Some say it stands for geometry. Others say it is symbolic for God. And still others say it represents the grand geometrician of the universe. My addition to this speculation is not intended to add any confusion. It is intended to bring some clarity and insight for those builders who desire more from Freemasonry. It should be evident that there are problems with all these speculations, mostly due to all the different languages one can find from one jurisdiction to another. I'll not go into these problems here, since they can be found in abundance elsewhere. What I offer to you is an uncommon speculation as to what the symbol actually represents. My speculation comes from an out-of-the-box thought that I believe fits well the mold that Masonic training encourages its members to undertake. This requires you to step out of the box of preconceived notions with me, though. It also requires that you look past the actual symbol itself and not associate it with anything that might be typically assigned to it. It furthermore requires you to see the source that projects the image of the symbol upon the cave wall. Adhering to all these requirements will hopefully prepare you for what is shared in the simple example and beyond. What is my speculation on the letter G? The symbol at the center of the square and compasses represents structure. Why? Because it is structure that conveys the only possible link between any symbolic conveyance and the objective world. This speculation is best supported and encapsulated by the following quote attributed to the late Polish-American philosopher and scientist, Alfred Kaczynski. If words are not things, and maps are not the actual territory, then, obviously, the only possible link between the objective world and the linguistic world is found in structure, and structure alone. It is structure that makes Freemasonry what it is. It doesn't matter what language in which it is spoken, what culture that renders it, or what Masons employ it. The structure of Freemasonry is unique, and to those raised within it, recognizable in the dark as well as in the light. And it is that very structure that both conceals and reveals the code that spells out what is required to build builders. The current structure of the three-degree proficiency preserves the code, which spells out what Masons must do to build builders. But it does not require that this code be executed. Current proficiency assures that the code remains intact for each generation to rediscover, should they take the time to examine it. It is up to the coaches of each generation to help those Masons who come through and hear this code to step beyond preserving it and into applying it toward building the builders of that and future generations. Until each new Mason discovers and applies it, it remains concealed and it is assumed lost. The structure that is about to be revealed to you is the result of many questions asked about ritual, lectures, and catechisms. You might ask, what was the specific question that triggered the quest for this structure? That is a great question to ask, as the response to that question was the catalyst for what is to follow. How exactly does masonry make good men better? This question was the basis of a long research project that I started soon after I entered into masonry. I was looking for specifics within the structure of the organization and its rendered literature. It took me many years to identify explicit aspects that would stand out as contributing factors in building builders. And as luck would have it, once I identified them, the ramifications of what I found were startling. Without the structure put in place by Masons, builders would not have a viable map of the territory they are to travel. The structure of ritual, especially those of the Blue Lodge degrees, communicates specific actions to Masons, especially those Masons with soundly attentive minds and firmly retentive memories.
Before I get into the actual code, let me...